I really can't describe to you what it's like to be an alcoholic. It's miserable. It's so anxiety riddled. Every morning I would wake up and wonder how I got to that point again. Uh, how can I hide in? It's the first thing I would uh, uh, think of when I wake up. How much am I going to keep my family How much can I drink? How much can I drink? It was running my life. Yeah. Probably better than I could. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael and I met in seventh grade, uh, Mr. Koss's math class. He actually sat behind me. <laughs> and we had a cute kiss together uh, yeah. at around that age and then never really spoke much after that. We just like remained friends and life kind of parted ways and then when Michael came home from Iraq, I was out celebrating my birthday with a few of my friends and he happened to be at the same place and I like came down the stairs and he out of everybody in the room stood up and was like you look so beautiful and the whole night we just talked and it was instant connection. We've, uh, yeah. we've been together ever since then. Um, well to be honest I knew that he had a problem drinking, but I don't think I could have even imagined how bad it was. My drinking really started running out of control and binge drinking when I came back from Iraq. My career was demanding. I felt out of control in every aspect of my life. I felt overwhelmed. Like we would go out to dinner and I'd have a glass of wine and leave it at that. He would order a drink and then have another drink and have another drink. like. God, I don't understand. I'm praying for my husband to like find you, to find salvation, for him to want to go to church with me, and yet we're having these same arguments. So it's frustrating. This alcoholism was this insidious onset. It was the first thing I would uh, think of when I wake up. How am I going to drink today? How much am I going to get? How can I keep my career? How can I keep my family? But manage this drinking problem that was running me. The more I drank, the more I, 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 my faith was lost, and it led to this incomprehensible demoralization for me. It's like one day I looked behind me, and all of a sudden there was this line, and I had crossed it. And I had no idea how I had gotten to that point or how long I had been across that line. My life was just completely out of control. I got a phone call from the ambulance. You need to head to Bronson. I had our son with us, who at the time was almost three, and we were allowed to see him in the hospital room. And when we went in there, the first thing he said to me is, I just want to get my life right with God. Laying there in, in a hospital bed, this overwhelming peace came across me. And I remember very clearly God meeting me in that moment. The Holy Spirit said, Michael, give this to me. I can do this. And as, as long as that took to get to that point where my life had just become unmanageable, it was resolved within a moment. I felt loved. Uh, I felt welcomed. I felt like I was myself again. I felt uh, just, I felt an overwhelming calming peaceful presence in my life, and I haven't had a compulsion to drink. It's doing for me what I could not do for myself. For it to come in this way is not the way anybody would have wanted it, but finally I was just like, thank you God for answering this prayer. It was a miracle. I feel like God has put it on my heart to share my story, to let other people know that there is hope and that there's good news out there in the love of Jesus. Where I came to Christ looking to stop drinking. I wasn't expecting to become a better father, a better husband. I got saved and my heart had been changed forever.